I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and cry happy tears with Wakaba Higuchi in the Kissing Cry. Hello, uh, welcome to national season. It has been a pretty wild uh, weekend here with both Japanese and Russian nationals taking place in the middle of the night for me. And at the exact same time, like overlapping. (laughs) was something. Great fun. Great fun, right? They would do this to us. (laughs) We thought Grand Prix season with like the back-to-back weekly Grand Prix were like intense. But little did we know. (laughs) Here was Japanese and Russian nationals on the same weekend in the middle of the night waiting for us. Oh, and oh the drama. And oh the needed therapy sessions afterwards. (laughs) Well, um, it does appear as though it is the 90th anniversary of Japanese nationals, which is very fun. Very fun indeed. And... A lot happened. It's an Olympic year as well. The Olympic teams were selected, which is really exciting. But we will talk more about that and our opinions on all those selections in our Kiss and Cry segment at the end of the episode. I think as a whole, the event was pretty (laughs) drama free. It was it seemed like it was only good drama here. Well, I mean, we did have Russian nationals to compare it against, but I agree. I agree with you. There was a lot of like happy tears going on. Happy, here. happy, joy, joy. Yes. Ha- yes. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Um, exactly. But let's start off with a very bittersweet but still lovely piece of news. It has been announced that the Chris Reed Trophy will take place next year on September 23rd in Karuizawa, Japan. And I think it's going to be an ice dance only competition. And that's just, that's just really nice. Very, very nice. And the Reed family continuing to, uh, to push on ice dance in Japan. So lovely. Uh, and also fun fact, my favorite Terrace House season did take place there. Although Terrace House is a a, a whole other topic that I won't get into. And (laughs) it is the season that used an 117 song as their theme song which is a neon pop punk band which is highly underappreciated welcome to my special interests in about 10 seconds <laughs> i was about to say this is just you're like what the fuck are you talking about summary of your brand and i'm completely <laughs> lost but <laughs> anyways uh <laughs> why don't we talk about ice dance now that we are on the ice dance train sure let's do that all aboard the ice dance train um oh my gosh this was such an interesting event because really it was team coco versus team kana dai which um was we were all waiting with bated breath to see what what the outcome would be here yes and a lot of people have differing opinions every everyone from jsf to marina zueva to little old us (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, in, in that order. JSF to Marina Sueva to us. That's how it goes. We, we're at the bottom of the totem pole. That's and like hierarchy. we're just like, we're fine. We're good. <laughs> we're okay. Um, well, uh, not to keep you all waiting in suspense, but uh, Team Coco did win the gold medal here. And uh, Daisuke and Kana did win second here. And the assignments are very interesting. So why don't we just talk about their programs first? Sure thing. So let's, I guess, let's start off with Kana and Daisuke. Their rhythm dance was a big no because they fell. It was crazy fall. It was, I was like, what? I know. In that pattern step, crazy, just, oh, I was so disappointed for them. And it's just one of those freak falls. Like, ice dance is one of those. It is the discipline, really, that you don't think everyone can trip up on, but it's super easy to. Ice is slippery, as they say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> However, they did do their Midnight Blues very well, getting all four key points. Their Twizzles, unfortunately, were only level threes for both of them, but their Midline Step was a level three also. And what sucked even more about that freak fall is because both Kana and Daisuke fell. They both went down. They both went down, and that's a minus two in deductions. Not just, like, one fall for the pair, and it counts as a minus one. No, 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 no. Both of them 
get counted as falls, and so that's two points off their score. It's very unfortunate. Oh, that just, oh it just sucks because they've been doing well all season long. Um, they did win the PCS in the rhythm dance by around a point. But yeah, that fall in the pattern step, you lose your levels alongside getting, you know, negative GOE and, and the deduction. The- yeah, that really did them in. And just knowing that the competition was so close was like, oh, geez, that really hit them badly. Mm, and that left them with around a five point gap between them and Team Coco, who came in first with 68.16. Yes. Um, And then they did do a lot better in the free dance, but unfortunately the gap was just a little bit too large. Uh, Most of it honestly points from that freak fall, you know, doing the calculations. Um, They scored 112.96 in the free dance and Team Kogo scored 110.01. So they did win the free dance. Um, Yes, they did. However, they did not win the whole event, unfortunately, but... Um, their free dance went so much better for them. Uh, their twizzles were level four, and I just kind of overall enjoyed the program a lot. No freak falls here, thank goodness. Thank goodness, absolutely. I this La Baya Dare program is just another Marina Zueva genius piece. Uh, I know that she's been waiting for a long time to put a La Baya Dare program together for someone, or a couple, or a team. So glad that. It's Connor and Daisuke because they skated gorgeously. The costumes are wonderful. And they, yeah, they did well here. One foot steps, both got level threes. Um, diagonal step, level three. So decent on the levels here, decent on the levels. But just under three points ahead of um, Team Coco. So unfortunately, not enough. Not enough to make it up. But hey, I enjoyed watching, you know, the battle between them because. It's been Me it's too. been tight all season, and it was it, it was like a good event. I it was one of those ones where like okay, I understand. Yeah, which you know we we don't always understand the scores, but <laughs> but this is more understandable than other things that went on this week. So we'll, we'll take that kind of. We'll take what we can get. <laughs> yeah, but just really unfortunate for Connor and Daisuke. Uh, however, they did somewhat get rewarded with um, the team selections that we'll talk about later. But how about let's get into um, Misato Kumatsubara and Tim Coletto. Oh my gosh, so happy for them. Team Coco, they were bawling. They burst into tears <sighs> after realizing they won. Love them. Love them. Strong emotions. But what did you feel about their rhythm dance? You know, it wasn't... The cleanest rhythm dance. I watched it and I was like, oh, 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 oh no. (laughs) Yeah. um, Honestly, if it weren't for that freak fall from Team Kanadai, you know, I don't know how this would have turned out because especially Misato was just kind of bobbling here and there in the twizzles um, and then into the diagonal step was just a lot of a lot of bobbles like a like a Christmas tree. (laughs) Tis the season. (laughs) The bobbles bobbling. Say that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that without the freak fall, Canada would have come up on top. I really do. Because uh, Team Coco, they got, for their key points in the Midnight Blues, they got a yes, yes, no, yes. Um, in their pattern step, they both got level threes, which I believe is the main difference here. Because that's, that's a lot of points in between two level threes versus one level two and one level one. Misato did only get a level one in the Twizzles though, whereas Tim got a level four. So yeah, not not the greatest from them. I've definitely seen them do better. Yeah, she, I think, had an especially bad day. I don't know if it was nerves. I don't know if it was the pressure. But yeah, just the points on that free fall really, really tripped up uh, Team Kanadai. Mm. So Team Coco did win the rhythm dance. And then in the free dance, again, was not the cleanest that we've ever seen them. And, you know, I don't think that they are the cleanest ice dance team out there. However, I really do like this program on them. I do. It's very nice. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning of the season when we first saw this program, it's perfect for them. I think it's like regardless of where the Olympics are held, it's going to create such a moment and the fact that they were able to skate this, obviously in a home crowd because this is Japanese nationals, um, it was just, yeah, it's a really good program theatrically. 
and artistically, but they were they were a little messy in some places. Twizzles were a bit eh. The rotational lift was a bit over time, so they got an extended lift for that and a one-point induction as well. But these costumes... Oh, they're so nice. They are amazing. They're gorgeous. I mean, they are already gorgeous people, but yes, the gorgeous true. costumes definitely enhance what they got. Absolutely. The whole experience, and Masato had, like, the, the makeup on. It was just The aesthetic was experience is impeccable. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just I just think they just had little mistakes here and there. And, you know, I think that if this had been a larger event, I don't think I think those mistakes would have maybe cost them in the standings a little more because it definitely w- was not their two cleanest performances that they've ever done. But it was enough to overtake Kana and Daisuke. They did get the gold medal here. And uh, we'll talk about the assignments later. But it was it was a big win for them, for sure. Yes, And so since we're talking about the assignments and I guess everyone's opinions later on, let's move on to another really big ticket item. Obviously, it's the men's event. I mean, you weren't really left in suspense. There were only so many. No. So many. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But I'm not sure why I had to laugh for so long. But anyways. um... I'm funny, Joss. Please. (laughs) It's because I'm funny. It's because, yes. I'll admit it. Yes, it's because you're funny. How about let's start off with our, one of our favorites, really, who came in 11th place, and that is the lovely and wonderful Keiji Tanaka. Uh, I still want fashion advice. Still waiting for that thrifting YouTube channel from him and uh, Kazuki Tomono. So, look, Shoma Uno's got a YouTube channel. Keiji, come on, he could do it. Um, also, two of my favorite programs: the Evangelion program and the Whiplash program. Again, he can really do no wrong, except in the elements. Oh no, <laughs> it's not really where you want to be going wrong, but. Oh, but let's talk about that short program. Hangs on to the quad sow. I was so happy. Thank goodness. We have a triple flip, triple toe. It was going so well. And then he pops the triple axle into a double. And it was almost like he was at Russian nationals, except there everyone popped it into a single. So (laughs) exactly. He was like, maybe I'll do one better. (gasps) Everyone's making mistakes. I'll do one better. I'll add one extra rotation. There you go. It's a bonus over these Russian men here. Um, And then we have the Whiplash program. I couldn't find the video for it. It was taken down from YouTube, which made me really sad because y'all know how much I love Whiplash and this program and KG's costume and KG. So very sad. But um, Jackie Wong of Rocker Skating did post the elements uh, online and KG popped the quad sound into a triple and then tried the quad again, but popped that into a double. Hand down on the triple axle. We have a double Lutz triple toe. Uh, another triple axle, a triple flip oiler, triple sow, and a triple loop for 148.32 into ninth. Oh, my heart. KG. My little heart. I feel like he's been doing that program with those elements all season. And I keep expecting something different. But you know what? We admire somebody with consistency. <laughs> he is a popper, unfortunately. Did you, did you have any Christmas poppers at Christmas? I don't know where else you'd have Christmas poppers. <laughs> we have popper. baubles and poppers. Tis the They're damn fun. season, says Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Taylor's version. Wow, this really is just a podcast about my special interests, isn't it? <laughs> but that's okay. It's all right. That's it's okay. my fucking podcast. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways. All right, and moving on to 10th place, we have Koshiro Shimada, coached by Stefan Lombiel, and this is the first time I have seen this boy skate. Yes, uh, his short program was to giving up, and, you know, same. <laughs> I was about to make a joke about that in my notes, and I was just like, oh, I made enough jokes about, like, song titles. <laughs> the joke has made it. Especially itself. with, like, giving up. <laughs> so I was like, wow, I'm about to give up with something. Reading, writing. <laughs> I've just given up full stop. <laughs> Just full stop. Just I, I try to add things, but it's no, it's all encompassing. That's all right. Um, although he did not give up on these pretty great elements that we have. I mean, he did turn out of his quad sal. Then we had a triple let's triple toe, which was pretty great. I think he is maybe an up and comer here. 
Absolutely. He it was kind of this like broody, moody teen sort of vibe he was giving. Oh yes, a good Makar Ignatov. <laughs> but is Makar as smooth as Kashiro? <laughs> Kashiro can spin. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding. Okay, all. there no no no. There is one spin that Makar can do, and that is the only spin. I'm kidding also, but y'all know what we mean. But we're not actually um, kidding. <laughs> Yes. But Kishiro, I, I agree. I think he's he's got this big underdog vibe and it, he's going to be interesting in the next quad, especially with um, Stefan as his coach and Shoma as his training partner. We might see something special from him. Shoma can't take him to the club. He's too young. <laughs> Therefore, he must take me. <laughs> That's it. That came out of nowhere, left field. But like, I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Um, his free skate to Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini. Um, again, couldn't find the video, um, but it does seem as though he made a couple of mistakes, stepped out of the quad cell and the triple toe. Um, does seem that he popped the opening toe as well. Um, but overall, he came in 10th for the free skate and uh, scored 233.67 overall, coming in 10th overall as well. Yes, and another new person that I haven't seen skate before is Tatsuya Tsuboi. He's 19. He's a junior, actually. And this kid, he has multiple springs in his legs. Multiple it's springs. It's like, oh my gosh, did you watch, I don't know if this is an Australian thing, but the show Arthur, the aardvark, where they buy moon boots and they're just like <laughs> bouncing Wait, everywhere. Arthur the aardvark? <laughs> well, it's just called Arthur, but Wait. he's an aardvark. Wait, hold on. I might. I have a bad memory, so hold on one second while I Google this. Arthur. Wait, that's an art. Uh, bullshit. That's an aardvark. <laughs> it's an aardvark. When you said aardvark, when you said Arthur, I was like, yeah, of course, Arthur. But then you said aardvark, and I was like, what the fuck? It's an but- aardvark, okay. I refuse to believe that. Anyways, there's an episode where Arthur has moon boots, and it's a great yes. episode, so you should watch it. Yes, no, I do recall that. But like I said, when you said aardvark, it threw me the hell off. <laughs> but okay. You know, if you watch the spelling like episode, they spell A-A-R-D-V-A-R-K. So that's how you know he's an Good aardvark. for them. <laughs> Metal for you. Metal for you. Anyways. <laughs> Back to Tatsuya. <laughs> um, for the short program, he skated to the Tree of Life soundtrack. Gorgeous triple axled start. Lovely triple flip. Uh, and then does a triple Lutz, triple toe, with the landing on the Lutz not looking great, but he righted, him, he righted himself quick and easy for a beautiful triple toe. Uh, this kid has just lovely springy jumps. And he did only get 77.31 to land in 12th for the short program. It wasn't a bad skate at all. He just didn't have any quads and his PCS were a little weaker than others. But that's nothing that he can't improve on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, th- I thought it was pretty pretty great. No big mistakes. Um, and then we have this free skate to Rachmaninoff, which I love. I love, I love. I also love this opening quad style. Why didn't he use that in the short program? It was gorgeous. We'll never know. We'll never know. We'll but never know. Similar, similar to the short program, Really lovely floaty jumps, but just would love to see more engagement with the audience because I think once he develops that aspect to his skating, he could be a real contender next squad because the technique is there, you know, it's all the skating skills are there, just the presentation needs a bit of working on. I agree. I agree. Um, so overall, he came in 12th for the short program with 77.31, then 8th for the free skates, so a little bit of redemption with 157.90, um, and overall came in 9th with 235.21 and seemed pretty excited about that. So good for you. We'll see what happens next quad. I love all the like the little junior kids, even though they're not little, they're like 18, 19. <laughs> They're just going, oh, my God, I scored that? Like, wow. And I'm like, it's yeah, because JSF is also known for absolutely shafting their skaters. Obliterating the scores. <laughs> They're just like, oh, my God, wow. This is the score that a novice kid in Russia would be getting. Amazing. I'm getting it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. Let's move to our eighth place finisher. We have Sota Yamamoto. Uh, dear Sota, 
This is the chaos. Every men's event needs at least one boy who delivers the chaos. And here he is. <laughs> here he is. So for the short program, he did wonderfully in. He skated to Yesterday by the Beatles, you know, had that jawline out that was ready to cut glass. Lovely quad sat open, triple axle, as well as a triple flip, triple toe that was done very nicely. And he scored a big 93.79. Yes. Um, and then in the free skate, again, couldn't find the video, oh, yeah. but oi, it looks like he made a lot of mistakes here, unfortunately. It is the embodiment of the word, ah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, he ended up 12th in the free skate. Uh, so he was fourth in the short program, 12th in the free skate, and eighth <laughs> overall, you know. Oh, bless. Uh, at least he, at least he maintained, you know, a top ten overall finish. Cause that would have been bad if he didn't. So it goes again, says Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, moving on to our seventh place finisher, Shun Sato, um, which uh. who had uh, maybe fortunately a more consistent showing with eighth in the short program and sixth in the free skate. But averaging out to seventh, you know. Um, Shun Sato, this kid is, he's an interesting one. Because he doesn't, he skates big, but also doesn't give much personality at the same time. But he also seems like one of those workers and athletes who, regardless of what injury they have, if their leg is about to, you know, come off and it's hanging by the bone or the skin or whatever, he'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm good to go. I I'm still good to skate. Mm -hmm. Put me on. Yes, <laughs> it's great. Uh, and then we also have a Phantom of the Opera, which I have a love-hate relationship with, but that's fine. It seems like... <laughs> I don't mind this. I really don't mind this one. But I think, do you remember how at the start of the season, Skate America... He was the one with the dislocated shoulder. Yes, I, I do. And I had flashbacks. It was it was very bad. Yeah. Bad, bad. Yeah. So it started off really, really well for the free skate. Huge quad lutz to open. A quad flip with a questionable edge, but it looked like a triple flip. Then he does two quad toes, one in combination. Uh, weren't great landings. And then a triple axle single toe. And I was like, ah, these little mistakes are becoming bigger. And then he's the first person I've seen fall on an oiler. I mean, I probably would too, but. <laughs> I probably, you know, me too. But I mean, in competition. Yes, I understand. <laughs> uh, and then you can see him holding his left shoulder. Oh, oh no. Because it was just, it was a little bit of a mess, the jump. So landing on the triple flip, he kind of fell out of but also went into the oiler and then stumbled and caught an edge and so he just fell on it and he kind of put out his arms but you could definitely see in the replays that he was grabbing his left shoulder after the fall which is obviously the same one he injured at the start of the season and unfortunately the fall was also right on the accent of the music and I was like Ugh. and then in the kiss and cry like he didn't put his left arm into his jacket sleeve and he was grimacing. That is not like, good news. Not good news. Oh, come on, kid. I hate this. Like, he's... Me too. Like, he's not my favorite skater, but still, he's super talented and I hate seeing anyone hurt and visibly so. Yeah, it was not... It's not good. I did not want to see any of this. I did want to see him skate. I did not want to see him get hurt skate. Yes. <laughs> I hope that he has plenty of time to recover, rehab do his PT, whatever it may be, because he needs his shoulder. <laughs> Shoulders are very important. They are, Shun. Please strap it up and just stay healthy. KT Tape. Sponsorship by KT Tape. And sponsorship by rest. Yes. Sponsorship by rest. Rest and repose. Um, but I would rigid strap that boy. I mean, that you're, well, the entire boy that is Shun Sato, but also, I mean, the boy that is the shoulder. I don't know why I gendered the shoulder, but, I mean, okay, I'm going to continue on because, yeah. We're going to continue <laughs> on, huh? Let's talk about our sixth place finisher, don't mind Sena me. Miyaki. Sena, I enjoyed. He skated to Unchained Medley for the short program in a costume that was really flappy, but also looked like 
a straight jacket inspired shirt and i was like i don't mm, know wow, about okay. that yeah i just don't i don't know about this costume it's, it's a little strange but anyways he did well scoring yeah. 90.52 for sixth and you know that if you're in the 90s and you're still coming sixth there's tough competition out there um and then for the free skate he's getting to swan lake and his costume is like gorgeous but it also kind of looks like like if I didn't know he was going to Swan Lake, I'd pick Romeo and Juliet. So I was like, mm, Romeo Lake, Swan Juliet, Swan Leonardo DiCaprio, Swan Leonardo DiCaprio, Swan Leo. Isn't there some meme about that where there's a swan chasing? Am I making that up completely? I, I feel like well, there's some meme. There, there probably is out there, but I have not seen it myself. Anyways, <laughs> that's not important whatsoever. What was important was that Santa did die figuratively on the ice afterwards. Yes, it is And I was true. like, wow, it represents me on a daily basis just collapsing. This is like when I was doing speech arts and I was in the mime portion of my exam <laughs> and I had to <laughs> die at the end of the mime portion. This reminds me of like the theater game Space Jump where things just, there's so many random things get called out and you're like <laughs> dying or like you're pregnant about to give birth and you're like, really? Okay, time to get on the floor. You have to be very literal about it. Yeah, but... I was like, is this, Sana, are you like Rothbart dying or are you the swan or are you the prince or is he my soul when I realized he wasn't skating to fantasy impromptu? Because I thought he was skating to fantasy, but no, it was Swan Lake. And I was like, damn, but maybe it's like he's actually just portraying Barbie from Barbie and Swan Lake. That's <laughs> that's the swan he's portraying. <laughs> you know, Barbie Swan Lake is OK. It, yeah, it's okay. Would you put it as God tier? No, so many no, people, no. So Absolutely. many people put it in as God tier, and I'm like, no, you're entitled to your wrong opinion. But I don't think so. <laughs> it's good, but not God tier. True. Anyway, moving on to one of our favorites. Oh, Kazuki Tomono. Love, love. I love him um, so much. We Yeah, we have a Cinema Paradiso short program, which uh, Brady Tonell is likely coming back for American Nationals. Likely not with Cinema Paradiso, but <laughs> anyways. Well, that's fine. We can have like sprinkles of Cinema Paradiso, unlike Bolero, which everyone decided to use in the same season. A large helping. That's not a, a sprinkle. It's a large helping of Bolero. Uh, okay, so in the short program, he came in seventh, which I think was a little... I don't know, seemed a little low for me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I was like, he got 87.79 with a quad sow he turned out of, a nice triple axle, a quad toe that he fought to keep the landing on, but managed to add a double toe on the end. And I was like, what? 87? Yeah, I don't really? know. I was a little surprised, especially like when the placement came out. I was like, oh, I don't know. It just seemed a little low yeah i mean the placement the placement i was like okay fine because other people skated better but he was literally like three points behind sana who was in sixth hmm. i was like really okay interesting um but who cares after that free program that was glorious so good la la land you know i don't know how i feel about la la land because i won't talk about it it breaks my heart but <laughs> mm breaks my heart but it's pretty great this program makes me cry i love it so much and i think it's up there with hanyan i didn't say besting i didn't all right didn't say Fine. besting i'm saying Fine. it's up there you know with that group and that group has a president and obviously it's han so i'm just yep. saying it can be on the pedestal okay i agree <laughs> but <laughs> he seemed really happy about it he seemed so happy about it it wasn't the cleanest program we've seen from him, but he stood on his feet. And then at the end, he went to touch the ice before he got off. And it was so yeah. sweet. Oh, it was so nice. He shouted out Misha Gay in the kiss and cry. It was... It was very nice. Did you see Misha um, posting after Kazuki's uh, skate on Instagram? And he's saying that... Oh my like, gosh, no, I didn't. Wait, what did he post? He posted and he said like, oh, he, I'm so proud of Kazuki. And he said it's the first time he's teared up watching a student of his. Oh, I love it. This program, though, is... Oh, I love it so much. Kazuki skates it so well. Ah, It's got a piece of my heart. It's pretty. It's pretty great. Not going to lie. I do enjoy it. 
And what was also pretty great is that he scored 175.88 for the free skate. He was fifth for the free skate and he ended up fifth overall with 263.67, which, you know what? This is decent. Top five, including Kazuki Tomato. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love this for him. We also love the performances that Kal Miura gave, the 16-year-old junior who loves watching anime and baseball matches. You know, I love watching anime. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> Full stop. Uh, we have another four seasons here. We got winter this time, so we're making the full full year around. Um, a lovely, lovely quad cell triple toe. Lovely, lovely triple axle. And then a save on the quad toe. But wow, very nice. Very nice indeed. He's so cute with his reaction to his score. He was like, what? What is going on? He scored 92.81 to land in fifth. Uh, this is wild that 92s are getting fifth. It's a fifth place finish. I know. But he was so happy and I was very, very happy for him. And this free skate, it was even better. Oh, I, I didn't even know that that could happen, but it did. Oh my gosh. It was it was very nice. He was so happy. Him and also Kazuki were just the happiest, happiest friends. Happiest beans. So he skated to a selection of music by Vicente Amigo. And I really like this music for him. Really great music choices and mixed very well. Uh, stepped out of the opening quad loop, but it was still crazy. And then freaking the quad sow, so much distance and flow. It's huge. And I was like, now that hits the plus four and plus five GOE criteria. Like judges and viewers, that's what it looks like. Yes, that is true. Uh, we had a few sketchy landings here, <laughs> but that's okay. But he pulls it off like so smoothly because he has the knee bend from the gods. Like these Japanese kids in their knees. Like I need those jeans and the training, like very jealous here my knees make a lot of noises so <laughs> <laughs> my ankles do my knees are fine but my ankles have been snapped in half too many times for them not to be creaking every time they move <laughs> um anyways he was extremely happy he came in fifth for the short program fourth for the free skate and overall fourth so very, very pleased for him. He was so dumbfounded, like speechless and shocked with his score in the free skate. It was 183.35 and he was just like, wait, what? He was just he, a happy man. Very happy. But now let's get into our top three. And I think if you were a betting person and found a pool for <laughs> Japanese nationals, you would have won because the top three is pretty much what everyone expected coming in third was Yuma Kagiyama with this program that I still am waiting to hop on board with but that's okay because my kobu fly is smiling and laughing so we'll just try to do that as well but um unfortunately he did go down on that quad toe very sad yeah um but I think I think this is the first time that I maybe hopped a little bit on board with this program really <laughs> because uh I think that the costume looked good on him that, that is true. I think it's, good. Is it, it's a new costume, right? Um, he looks so I cute so. and smart in the vest. I was like, oh, baby humor. Uh, but yeah, you know what? Now I'm kind of seeing where you're, you know, coming from with the, eh, it's, it's an okay program. I mean, I like it. I think that for an Olympic year, they could have given him a more punchy program. Agreed. Agreed. Like, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, no, there's nothing, like, wrong with it. There's never anything wrong with Michael Bublé. No. But, yeah, just a little, little more punch needed. Uh, but thankfully, he does bring all the punch with the gladiator free skate that he has, which I actually really, really enjoy for him. Yeah. Unfortunately, at least to my eyes, um, I do wear glasses, so people, yes, you can say that, oh, she's got bad eyesight, so she probably can't see properly. I dropped out of optometry school, so I'm doing no better here. <laughs> But in my eyes, it seemed like it was it was slightly under the humor that we've seen uh, throughout the season. He seemed super gassed, but I mean, he delivered the elements good enough. Uh, it was job done. Uh, landed the quad sow, a lovely quad toe, triple toe, triple axle, oiler, double sow co, and then stepped out of the second triple axle. And then just, I, I felt like 
perhaps nerves or fatigue got to him today, but like very, very minor details, very minor details. Yes. He did more than enough to come in third. He actually came in second in the free skate, which was pretty, pretty great. Uh, again, like I was saying, I really enjoy this gladiator program on him, but I do wish that he had a different short program. <laughs> I do enjoy the gladiator <laughs> program too. And then it's really cute because Yuma-san, he kept it all together, but then when he got off the ice and went for a hug with his coach, who is also his dad, he started tearing up and crying. And I was like, oh, I love it. I just love all these expressions of joy, unbridled expressions of joy here at Japanese Nationals. It makes me so happy to see these athletes happy because, oi, do we need some joy in the world right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Shoma Uno, who came in second, delivered some joy to Stefan Lambiel, but didn't deliver joy to me through the short program because I am still missing Armin Van Buren. You know, he would deliver me joy if he took me to the club. With Armin Van Buren. I love Armin Van Buren on Shoma. Okay, I know. it just feels so good on him. It was such a good program. Like, this is fine. It's okay. It's not bad, but. But it's no Armin Van Buren. It's no Armin Van Buren. And, like, it doesn't have, you know, that fun shirt that Armin Van Buren had. We do love a fun shirt. Why am I missing that, like, that tie dye fun shirt? That I'd probably be like... <laughs> it's a tie-dye fun shirt. Yeah, true. Still, I think it would bring down the house at the Olympics. Like, come it on. It really would. Imagine Shoma doing the short program for the team event with Armin Van Buren. It would go viral. A thousand percent. It would. Vivaldi ain't going viral anytime soon. Vivaldi has <laughs> come and gone, my friends. <laughs> he has been around the block. He's not going viral. I'm sorry. Shoma, come on. You have a YouTube channel. Play to the masses, please. Please. It's not too late to change. I mean, for everyone else it is, but for you it isn't. Just because I want it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Well, he did very well. Uh, He scored 101.88. No big mistakes on the jumps. Pretty great. But like we said, Vivaldi is not going viral anytime soon. Yeah. However, this Bolero, look, we've we've absolutely shit on Bolero all season. However, I don't mind this. I he th- really, like, went for it I here. Know. He, he did an Alexandra Trusova. Yes. And I think because this isn't, like, the traditional Bolero kite, I don't mind it. I mean, I still love last season's programs, but I, I think Shalero's okay. I... I'm I'm all right with Chalero. It's okay, fine. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> um, he really just went for everything. Wow, <laughs> that was nuts. The technical content of this program is through the roof. Wild. It's wild. Opens up with a quad loop. I was like, holy shit. Then quad sal to follow. Saves the landing of a quad flip, but he gets it done fucking dope triple axel as well i was like damn this little weeb's on fire (laughs) and then unfortunately he goes down on the quad toe um but then right back at it and he gets another quad toe done it is a repeated jump but it landed and then triple axel oiler triple flip he's just going he really really was um He, those mistakes did cost him second place in the free skate, unfortunately. But that's only because Yuma did quite well. Um, And those, yeah, those mistakes on that last quad toe was not, probably cost him a lot, but. Oh, well. Enough to get him second overall. Yes. And obviously in first, I would have bet my mortgage on it, even though I don't have a mortgage. You know, I'm never betting my mortgage, but. <laughs> I, I only said that because I have literally zero mortgage to bet. <laughs> it's like, no thanks. I, I wouldn't, you know, bet anything of significant value that could render me bankrupt. However, for that which I'm willing to lose, I would bet it on you, zero on you. <laughs> Uh, here he is coming in with the quad axle for the free skate, but uh, let's talk about the short program first, the Rondo Capriccioso short program, which I actually really enjoy. It's no let me entertain you. No, it's not. Oh, not shaking our ass, anyone. Shake <laughs> your ass, baby. 
<laughs> no shaking our ass, but oh damn it, I missed that program. I know. Now that I say oh, it, I, I miss really miss it. it. Anyway. I was entertained here, but maybe not quite as entertained had he uh, shaken his ass, baby. But <laughs> it's okay. It's a great program. Love it. And he did it really, really well. Um, I think he, for Yuzu, he could have done it a little better. But that's, it's Yuzu. Like, it's, he's insane. And that triple axle. So Japanese nationals and Japanese broadcasts, they are amazing with their visualization of stats. And they did a comparison between, oh, they didn't do a comparison, I think, but someone on Twitter did a comparison between Yuzu's triple axel here at this year's Japanese Nationals versus last year's Japanese Nationals. And it's kind of insane because the height of his triple axel now, because he's been working on the quad axel, has just, it's increased so much. So... Last year's triple axle covered 3.06 meters. Now it covers 3.24 meters. And last year it was 63 centimeters high. And this year it's grown 10 centimeters in height. And now it's 73 centimeters. Who, who improves 10 centimeters in height for a triple axle? The last time I grew 10 centimeters in height was about the fifth grade. So, <laughs> are you? Though the same legs jump in 10 centimeters extra. That, that is wild stuff. Wild. People have been saying like, oh, because he's been working on the quad axle, now his triple axle is like too big. And I'm like, wow, what a problem to have. Wow. You know, out of all the problems that one could have, that's really not, <laughs> not high on the list of big problems. Um, but with this first showing of Rondo Capriccioso, did I even say that correctly? Um, people did so much analysis on it. And at Rosaline Winter on Twitter, she did an analysis on his crossovers. She found that it only had six crossovers in it, not counting the cross-unders, and apparently none, no crossovers in the second half of the program. We've seen a lot of programs that are just, like, full of crossovers. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is crossover. Uh-huh. And this is skating, everyone. At the senior level, you're supposed to be getting your speed from, you know, your transitional movements and not crossovers. Like, yes, imagine that. That's, what's, that's what a lot of people say is the difference between juniors and seniors is that by senior, or it's like as you're going up the, the levels, your crossover numbers should decrease because, you know, a bracket should take you further across the ice than it did, you know, previous seasons. This counter and this rocker should be taking you further and you should be able to generate more power. And I'm like, hello, the rest of the seniors. And hello, some ice dancing pairs as well. Yes. User is here to take everyone's gold. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> um, let's talk about the free skate, though, and that quad axle. Like, oh, my God, those rotations were like, woo, whipping around. Fucking nuts. He is absolutely nuts. So wild. And he stayed I, on his feet? It was it was something. Like, sure, it was called downgraded and got negative grades of execution. Because, Whatever. Like, who, the, okay. who gives a shit? He, it's recorded on the protocol that he attempted a quad axle. He stood up on it. This is fantastic. Uh, wild. Uh, there's not really much else to say about the program because Yuzu's goat. He's even beyond goat. Because who stays in competitive skating just because they want to do the quad axle and quince? Like, oh, just cause. I love it. it I it's great. It. Um, and also, may I just point out that his quad toe Euler triple sow scored 20.21 points. <laughs> this is a lot of points for one jumping pass. I think Nika Igatze, who skated, oh, I can't, was it Rostelecom GP, barely got those amount of points for his technical element score initial program. Welp. That's a big whelp. welp. Like 20 points for one element. Wow. Insane. Oh, my goodness. And also, he's so engrossed in the character of his program that it takes a while for him to come out of it, kind of like a method actor. It legit takes him time to wind down and detach himself from uh, the 
whatever character or whomever he's embodying during this program. It's amazing. I love it. It's so magical. It's really what makes him him. And I just, I adore it. It's amazing. It is magical. And he did score 211.05 for the free skate, which is a domestic record, just like the short program, scoring 322.36 overall and locking in his spot for a third Olympics. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, with that being said, let's move on to our women's event. Oh my gosh. What an amazing event. It was truly full of amazement and also nail-biting finishes. And yeah, but we'd be remiss not to mention the lovely Rika Kahira, who had to withdraw due to her persistent right ankle injury. And because she's not competing at Japanese nationals and she hasn't competed all season that rules her out definitively for the Olympics next year that's really really sad I I don't know I I couldn't imagine an Olympics without Rika Kahira but here we are who's going to be the potential breaker upper of the Russians I well we'll talk about them well they're they're coming they are coming wait wait a second we'll talk about them in maybe 15 minutes here (laughs) Ten if we talk quickly. <laughs> Rika did make an appearance throughout Japanese Nationals on Twitter, though. Uh, after the event finished, she tweeted, Congrats to everyone under this great pressure. I was very impressed to watch the event on TV. I'll be able to heal my injuries as soon as possible and come back even stronger. I'll do my best, too. And it was full with, like, cute-ass emojis and stars. I was like, oh, bless this kid. I miss you. I know. I just, I'm so sad to see an Olympics that is going to go by without Rika Kahira. Although her programs have not been my favorite, even though I think they do grow on me yeah. as the season passes. When I first see them, I'm like, whoa, this is a yeah. lot. But I think they've all grown on me over the seasons. And I think that she has made some really, really great moves for her athletic career. I just, I'm really sad to see an Olympic season or an Olympics go by without her because I really thought that she would be there. Um but I do think that there are some some amazing selections and difficult selections of Japanese women that we will, of course, talk about here. But I hope that her ankle gets better because ankle injuries suck. Yep. <laughs> suck, suck, suck. All right. Let's start off our discussion with who else can we start off with? It's, of course, Marin Honda. Oh, goodness. Well, number one, I love her. Duh. Uh, number two, Seven Nation Army, which is pretty great. Yes, and we have a new Seven Nation Army dress, but it it's this type of green that reminds me of, you know, Barbie, a fashion fairy tale. <laughs> like the I green, do, and I really enjoy it. The so green it's a good spark dress. dresses from the antagonists, though. <laughs> you know, if you don't know this movie, which <laughs> I'm guessing most folks don't, it's a good one, and I like the dress. That's it. You Full wait, stop. you love. Okay, no, I like it on Marin, but it reminds me of, like, the dresses from the attack. Anyway, if you've watched the movie, you'll know, but if you haven't, don't fucking worry. Just, we're just... <laughs> don't worry, don't I'm sure no one is worried about this. No. Zero <laughs> of the people that are listening to this are actively worrying. They're just like, why the fuck are you watching Barbie movies? Let's move on. <laughs> Anyways, um, it started off pretty well, but unfortunately, that loop... <sighs> Damn it. I was so excited at the triple flip, triple toe to start off with. And I was, <sighs> yep, the double loop came along and I was like, fuck. <sighs> Marin, it always has got to be something. Always something. I hate it for her. I hate that for her. And she ended up with 55.73 and came 23rd out of 30. Oh, I don't like it. Barely getting the cut off to the free program. <laughs> I don't like it. Big sad. Um. Oh, my gosh. But this free skate dress, can we please talk about it? It's yes. literally one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. It's delightful. There's not really much else to say. It's gorgeous. It's so good. Um. Unfortunately, this is another program that started off pretty strong, but then just kind of did not carry through all the rest of the way. Yep. I was like, Marin can deliver with the costumes yet again, but can we get a delivery of skating? I don't Please. know. I don't know what it is for her. Oh, I, I want her to have a comeback season. Maybe it'll be next 
next quad. I don't know. Hopefully. I mean, Hopefully. she did say in an interview after the free skate that I'm slowly returning to my previous state. I saw the ice dancers and it was a wonderful performance that made me cry. I also wanted to skate like that. I can do more if I continue to skate. If I continue to skate, Maren. Uh, I want to be, I want to aim for perfect performances and I want to surpass myself in the past. And I think, sure, Maren, I'm really on board with that. But also, if you like the ice dancers so much, maybe you can switch. Just saying. Oh, you know, I think there would be many athletes lining up to be her partner i would line up to be her partner i'll line up like i won't be chosen but i'll line up exactly i'll be there for you know support <laughs> i'll line up for support all right um why don't we talk about our favorite tom, tom and jerry skater johanna Yakoy. i was about to say our favorite fat bottom girl and i was like no <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. That is the song in her free skate, though. Yes, in case that's you did yeah. not know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's start off with this short program to Malaguena. Boy, um, well, uh, it again another athlete that starts off very well, but then doesn't kind of carry through for the rest of her program. Uh, we had a double axle and a triple flip. And then she turned out of her cell and tacked on a double toe. And then the step sequence was only a level two. So she did end up coming in 14th for the, sh for the short program. 14th. Ouch. Ouch. But the free skate, it was slightly better. Only a double axle today. We know she can do a triple axle. And then uh, double axle, triple toe, she fell on. And then at the end, I was like, hey, are you... Are you crying? Are, are you crying because you're sad? Are you crying because you're happy? I don't know, I but you're tell. crying. Oh, no. um, although I think that after the Grand Prix in Grenoble uh, in France, Johanna said that she's not sure whether she's going to continue her career or not. So maybe it's just bittersweet tears. But I was like, you're still no, crying. I don't know. <laughs> I do want her to keep skating. I mean, if that's what she wants, obviously. Who, who of course. <laughs> I want but if she wants to keep skating she should be able to that's I'm putting my foot down for her <laughs> but if she doesn't want to she's full reign to quit as well I also endorse quitting if she wants to yes mother Yukoi <laughs> no mother Yukoi <laughs> anyways and someone who came in seventh and we've seen compete this season on the international stage is Rina Matsuiki and she did all right. Um, short program came in sixth with 72.31. And I was like, this kiddo is going to be a star next quad. She can, she's going to have her moment sometime next quad. And you know what? This is just going to be some experience building for her here. Yeah, it was pretty great. Uh, she came in sixth in short program with 72.31. And in the free skate, 126.46. She had a couple of falls in the free skate, unfortunately. Yeah. So a couple of deductions. She went down on the Lutz. She went down on the flip. Um, got it back together, but um, overall came in seventh, which was actually quite consistent. <laughs> yeah, we love consistency. <laughs> we, we love consistency. It's not a men's event. <laughs> Um, but in sixth place was a real big surprise of the event, and this is Rinka Watanabe, 19 years old, and she really blew the roof off with her free skate to Kamina Burana. Oh my gosh, I love Carmen Burana. <laughs> my dad was obsessed with Carmen Burana. I mean, I it's a little kid, so it's very familiar to me. Yes, and I was like, this is boss bitch music selection though like who just casually goes mm, for the olympic season which i'm eligible for i might just skate to come in a burana sounds great I was like wow <laughs> good idea <laughs> intensity but she delivered oh it's fantastic started off with a triple axle bam it was a planned triple axle triple toe but the landing on the axle wasn't you know, supremely solid so she moved the triple toe to uh, the double axle in the later half of the program. Yes, um, it was pretty. It was pretty great. She skated clean. Uh, she came in fourth, which was amazing. Um, it made up for some of the points from being eighth in the short program, and she earned a season's best, which was great to see. And she was very, very happy. 
I know, just coming under the 200 mark. She was so shocked at the score. And I, you know what? She, her This girl looks solid, really solid. Good jumping technique as well. Uh, she's got personality in her. I mean, she's getting to come in Verano, like, <laughs> come on. And all in all, like, really, really great. And she got rewarded for it by JSF. And we'll, like we've mentioned, we'll talk about all the teams and their selections at the end of the episode. I feel like we don't say that a lot, rewarded by JSF. <laughs> like, how many here, times have we said that in our lives? We take Never. all the food away from you, but any morsel we give you, it's a reward. <laughs> it's a reward. <laughs> Okay, well, let's talk about pod fave. I mean, a lot of people's faves, but it's Satoko Miyahara who came in fifth. Okay, sure, we'll take it. Top five, we'll take it. I mean, I really did want her on the Olympic. Everyone team, but did. It's fine. Fifth is fifth is fine. That's everyone great. did for sure. Um, but song for a little sparrow, one of the most gorgeous short programs ever. The music is just so amazing, and the build up to the end always raises the hairs on my arm it's it's a good one it's a good one it's really really good um triple it's triple toe the toe was called under but it was i it was a fine program 73.76 into fourth and just behind kari in the pcs like 0.09 so pcs we delivered technicals we somewhat delivered and i'm okay with it yeah i'm okay with it um, we got level fours everywhere here, which was fantastic. And it looks as though she is working on her under rotations. We only had one jump called under here, and it was the toe and the opening jumping pass. So we're working on it. Working. And these two programs are just so good. Tosca for the free skate. Love it. Not the greatest program for her, but who gives? It's it's Satoko. Like, whatever. But did you realize that she wrote on her right hand, in the short program too, the words joy, learn, free, and light? She wrote, I was oh. like, this is so cute. But then I was like, is That's this great. what Lee Barkel did for you? But you know what? Sure. <laughs> Maybe it was Gabby Dalman. Maybe it was Gabby Hall. That does give a kind of, It's kind sweet. Of, that does seem kind of like a Gabby Dalman yeah. thing, doesn't it? I like it. I enjoy it. Um... Well, unfortunately, in the free skate here, we do have definitely a lot more under rotation calls here. We had some quarters. We had a quarter on the uh, toe and the opening jumping pass. We had a quarter on the flip. Um, and then we had under rotations on the sal. We had under rotation on the lutz and then the toe and the last jumping pass here. So still working on the rotation. but And we got a fall on that triple lutz as well, which is unfortunate. Yes. Um, so still... Again, still working on the rotation, but very, very nice to see her fourth in the short program, sixth in the free skate for overall finish of fifth. Really wanted to see her on that Olympic team, but uh, I think that the rankings here or the placements here definitely, I think I think they definitely reflected how these athletes skated. Mm -hmm. So no complaints, I guess. Yeah. And I guess moving on to fourth place here, Another pod fave. Oh, I do love her. I love her so much. And that's, of course, my Mahara. Oh, my gosh. Um, amazing. Uh, very, very clean this season. She has had a good season. Consistency does wonders. You know, <laughs> it's great. Um, we have Glee. I was a Gleek. So, again, no complaints. <laughs> no complaints here. I, I love just pointing out that it's the Glee version of I Dream to Dream. You know... From a Gleek, I again no complaints. Uh, we have a new dress. It's great. She's the only one who can pull off like a straight brown. Honestly, brown is very very in this season. I could never it do is. it, but she can. I reckon you could do a brown. Just had nope. to be has to be the right shade. Absolutely not. <laughs> I will. Well, you're entitled to a wrong. Next time we meet up, I'm gonna put you in a brown that suits <laughs> you. Too. Dress me in brown clothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fine. <laughs> Uh, wait no i have a thing that's like kind of like a beige brown that i think you'd look awesome in anyway not a fashion podcast it's a skating podcast however you, you can never tell <laughs> you can you can never tell what are we are we a cheese hating podcast a cheese we, hating podcast we're not i love cheese are we a taylor swift loving podcast yes are we a neopunk loving podcast yes food fashion whatever just 
apparently not skating. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, she did score 73.66 in the short program, which is only 0.1 points behind Satoko, who was in fifth. Oh, so wild super, stuff. super close. Wild stuff. Um, but really what kind of was the huge moment, the kind of deal sealer, was her free program, which is obviously one of the most gorgeous things this season. It's to Fairy of the Forest and Galaxy, which Mai just is. She's both the Fairy of the Forest and the Galaxy. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Oh, man, that... Mm. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just very sad about it. What do we... How do we even talk about... Uh, maybe I'll just... I'm just sad that her minion tissue box holder didn't give her the powers for that double axle that she needed, that she popped. So it was going so well, and then she popped a double axle into a single axle and single toe, and I was like, oh no. I'm a sad lady. That pop left a lot of points on the table, according to Jackie Wong, around six to eight points. I'm a sad, sad lady. And then... She came back with a triple lutz, triple toe, double toe, which was I was like very happy for. But uh, the triple toe was called on the quarter, the double toe was called under, and then she did a triple loop, double toe, which the toe was invalid because it was her fourth combination, and you're only allowed three combos, so that lost her points as well. Um, but she did manage 133.20 for fifth in the free skate. And she skated before Monica a bit. And I was like, damn, this it's gonna is... going to be wildly close. If Mana doesn't skate well, then it's going to be really, really tight. I was just like, can we just send Mana, Mai, and Satoko to Four Continents, please? I know the turnaround between Four Continents and Olympics is like apparently really, really tight. But I don't want to make a decision. No one make a decision. We're sending three, four, and five to Four Continents. <sighs> Send them all to the Olympics. Just all of them. Yeah, exactly. Every single one. So really just a lot of points left on the table, which was really unfortunate for Mai. And it became a lot closer after we saw Mana Kawabe skate her free skate. So why don't we move on to Mana? Oh, gosh. Okay. Yes. Let's let's move on to her. Okay. Uh, this short program to the Max Richter. Whoa. Triple Axel. Let's go. It's a good short program. <laughs> really good short program. Yeah, it's a good triple axel. Um, then we had triple let's triple toe, triple flip. Scored 74.27 for third place in the short. And her technical element score only 0.04 behind Kauri. Oh my gosh. And her over her score in the short program, so close to Wakaba. Very, very oh close. Gosh. Like three tenths close. <laughs> See, I really enjoy this because everyone is skating well, and I'm just like, this is the type of nail better that I enjoy. Yeah, I really like this. This is competition, right? When everyone's skating their best and, you know, the scores are tight, that's like the fun and intensity of a competition. Not seeing everyone fall and, you know, wax all everywhere no, like the like men. That. Like, that's not the intensity we no, want. This is so great. This is the type of competition that we love. Um, okay, and then we have her free skate. Uh, we got some Sarah Brightman going on here. Yes, miracle. And then, bam, triple axle to open yet again. But then the rest of the program really wasn't, like, superb. It was, landings were kind of shaky. Oh my gosh, I really wonder what would have happened, what would have happened if my Mihara had landed that axle, oh. that axle toe we got going on here. Well, like, she would have won the free skate of Imana. <sighs> we'll never know. We'll never know. It's a situation. We'll never know. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? It's Who knows? And honestly, I, in my notes, I was like, you know what? I think Mana has it over my, however, less than one point separated Mana and my initial program. And there were a lot of elements under review for Mana. And I was like, this might be really, really tight because the landings, the GOEs, you know, that might affect a lot of things. But Mana ended up with 135.38, so two points um, over Mai, but PCS only two points behind Mai. Uh, however, that was enough to secure her third place at Japanese Nationals. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy to say this, but our silver medalist, Wakaba Higuchi. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> this top two right. is my favorite oh, top two. Oh, favorite top two ever. Please. Um, okay. Well, walk of a short program to your song by Ellie Goulding. Hopefully we can get some, uh, what do they say on TikTok? Uh, some applause for the dress. What? Or whatever they say. I'm it's, it's okay, a TikTok right. sound. Anyways, um, some appreciation for your song by Ellie Goulding uh, because everything was clean. Everything was level four. Although we did have low positive GOEs. Like, what the fuck's up with that, judges? But it was great. But judges and giving Wakabo what she deserves. Like, that's never been a thing. I mean, thing. higher GOEs. Never is been what a she thing. Deserves, but... It's never been a thing. I mean, for JSF to give. Wakabo even anything close to what she deserves. <laughs> However, I was like, "What? Well, look, I don't mind your song. I'm really, like, ambivalent about it. I think she skates it wonderfully. She's so happy in it. So good on her. But can we get tights that match the rest of your skin tone and the rest, rest of yes. the mesh? I was like, what? Well, that's the one Please. thing that I want from you. One. Um, okay, and then the Lion King free skate. Ugh. All right. Triple axel stepped out of the triple axel, but whatever. I don't care. We, we got legs. Care. We're still standing. Still, still on the feet. <laughs> Um, there were some little eked out landings here and there. Uh, we had another rotation call on the toe and the Lutz toe combo. And then we had, um, an edge call on the flip, a little exclamation mark going on here. But like, who cares? Do we care? No one cares. No, no. It was on the feet. She fought for the program and then she let out a fucking roar at the end. And I was like, let it out, honey. I'm with you. Let it out. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Crying. And then she's bawling as she's coming off the ice. She did it after everything. World silver fucking medalist Wakaba Higuchi nailed it. Oh, after oh so many seasons <laughs> of her struggling. It's been so many years. After the free skate, she said in an interview, I skated with strong feelings thinking that this was my last chance at challenging for an Olympic spot. I worked hard all season just for this Nationals and I was able to deliver my best performance with a mental strength that isn't even comparable to four years ago. Oh, I love it. Love to see it. Coming out the other side stronger and better for it. And you're an Olympian now, girl. I mean, like, you're an Olympian when you step onto the ice for the first time, technically. However, you're going. You're going. You're getting that uniform. You're getting the photos taken. You're walking the opening (laughs) ceremony, hopefully. We'd love yeah. to see it. And our gold medalist, Kari Sakamoto. Love. Perfect. Love. Perfect. I don't really know what else to say. I don't know what to say. Absolutely perfect. Just just amazing. <laughs> Although we do have to work on that. <laughs> that Lutz edge, but it's fine. Kari, yes, has is notorious for not the strongest Lutz edge. And she has been actively working on it. But other than that, both programs... Everything was perfect. Everything was really, it really was. She skated two absolutely great and killer programs. I love how the crowd was clapping way before Kari had finished in the free skate and they were getting a standing ovation. This was a good crowd. I liked this crowd. It was a good crowd. And, you know, that's your national champion, everyone. Leading the Japanese women contingent into Beijing. I love it. There's nothing to say. No need There's to talk really about nothing anything. to say. Like <laughs> you can you can see her so excited and bawling, bless her soul, that she made it. I really enjoyed the women's event. Me too. Nothing really to say. The top two just uh, big love, absolute big love. They were crying, they were hugging each other, and so happy for for each other on the podium. So like, lovely. The support between them. I was like, you're gonna make me cry even more. So nice. So nice. <laughs> All right. Um, Well, that about wraps up the women's event. Let's actually go into talking about the team selection for the rest of the major events. Yes. For the rest of the season. Let's do that. Okay. So after Japanese Nationals, JSF did announce pretty much their teams for the rest of the season so for the olympic games for worlds for continents and for junior world champs and let's start off with a big ticket event which is of course the winter olympics let's start off with the women shall we 
Sure. Um, I, I guess we have no surprises here, um, but our athletes that will be going that were chosen were Wakaba Higuchi, Mana Kawabe, and Kari Sakamoto. And our subs are Mai Mihara, Satoko Miyahara, and Rino Matsuiki. So again, no surprises there, but very, very well deserved. Yes, and not really any complaints either. I think it's justified. Although I'd love to have seen Mai on the Olympic team. I know. You know so, same, same. Mana has much more scoring potential and, you know, she definitely deserved her place on the team right there. Yes. And for the men, again, no surprises. The Olympic team is Yuzuru Hanyu, Yuma Kagiyama, and Shoma Uno, with the subs being Kamiura, Kazuki Tomono, and Sena Miyake. Love it. I mean, no complaints. None. Very well deserved. Um, and then we have, let's talk about our dance selection. Um, again, they selected uh, Misato and Tim, Team Coco, to go to the Olympics. Again, they were crying. It was beautiful. It was a very nice moment for them. And our sub is, of course, uh, Kana and Daisuke. Yes. And for pairs, no surprises here, but Riku Miura and Ryuchi Kihara oh, got the... I love it. Yes. I love them. They got the Olympic spot um, way earlier than Japanese nationals because they actually had to withdraw from nationals because they train in Canada. It was, you know, it was a real possibility with Omicron floating around that if they left Canada to go to nationals, they might not be able to get back in to Canada to prep for the Olympics. So uh, they took a decision to withdraw. And because of their performance throughout the rest of the season, JSF was just like, yep, Here's your Olympic ticket. You're good to go. Good to go. Yes, I mean, very well deserved. You know we love them. If you've heard us talk about them before, they're phenomenal. So glad that they get the opportunity to go to the Olympics and glad that they, you know, didn't have to hop on a plane full of Omicron. So good for them. <laughs> full of Omicron. It's chock full of um, Omicron. And our 2022 world team is Pretty much the same for women, men, and pairs. However, for dance, uh, Kane Murumoto and Daisuke Takahashi are the ones going instead of Team Coco. You know, I don't mind it. I don't usually I say don't that about it. any of the decisions that JSF makes, but here mm-hmm. I am saying it. Yeah. And it, so after the uh, after the event, Marina Zueva, who's the coach of Team Kanadai, came out with a kind of like this whole piece shaming JSF. And she was like, it's a shame because throughout the season, you know, Kanadai won all the competitions they participated in against Team Coco. And the Federation decided not to send them to the Olympics, guided by rules that were approved many years ago. So according to the Japanese rules, the selection for the Olympic team is not only based on current season's results, but also factors in last year's rating. And Marina was just like, yo, my couple didn't perform at all last year. Like, and it turned out that the the decision made was absurd and doesn't correspond to the new reality. And, you know, people have been talking all about how Team Canada's season's best score has been points, like multiple points, almost like 20, I think, above Team Coco. And so that caused a lot of uh, discussion and contention. But apparently JSF was like, we chose Team Coco purely because they won nationals and because they consider the competition between Canada and Team Coco to have been tight all season. That's why Canada was sent to Worlds. I was like, Worlds and Olympics. The different levels of competition, but okay. It's true. It's true. You know, the fact of the matter is they had one spot. It was a hard decision. This was not, it was, this true. was not like pairs, which was like, easy. which was yeah, an easy decision. For sure. But. I, it's it's understandable. Sorry, Marina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Oh, but, it's kind of a heartbreaker, you know, though. It is. It is. But, you know, Canada also got uh, the spot to four continents, and I am here for them to win that. Yeah. Even though the American teams, they're also going to four continents, but who cares? I want every single winner at four continents to be Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um, All right. So for four continents, maybe we could talk about our women and our men selections. Uh, Pairs is the same. Miura and Kihara, they're going to have a 
busy, busy rest of the season. <laughs> yes. And they're doing both uh, both legs of the team event at the Olympics too. Oh, like They're skating a lot. Hope they have uh... a... <laughs> kind of glad that they didn't go to nationals. <laughs> I know. They got, they got a rest. No Omicron either. Um, well, hopefully no Omicron. Uh, okay, so for four continents for our women's selections, we have Mai Mihara, Satoko Miyahara, and Rino Matsuiki. And our subs are Yohana Yokoi and Mako Yamashita. Solid. Yeah. Mai Mihara second title, please, for four continents. Oh, Thank you very much. Imagine. Imagine. And for men, the team is Kamiura, Kazuki Tomono, and Sena Miyake, and the subs are Shun Sato, Soto Yamamoto, and Koshiro Shimada. No surprises here. And again, Kazuki for gold. Oh, Kazuki for gold. Imagine. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it so much. All right. Uh, and then finally, let's just briefly talk about our World Juniors selections. Uh, for women, we have Rion Sumiyoshi and Rinka Watanabe, which is no surprise. Um, and our subs are Rino Matsuiki and Hana Yoshida. And for men, the team is Kamura, Shun Sato, and Tatsuya Tsuboi, with the subs being Lucas Tiyoshi Honda and Nozumu Toshioka. And for dance, the team selected is Naokida and Masaya Morita, and there is no pairs contingent being selected to go to Junior Worlds. And yeah, that is it. Is there anything you... Oh, you know what? Um, I forgot to mention, Yuzuru Hanyu in an interview said that right before NHK Trophy in November this year, he injured a ligament in his right leg and the stress of it all led to, led to him getting a bad fever. He was unable to train or do anything for a month. And he even thought about retiring and said his heart was about to break. And I was like, girl, what? I don't like this. this I don't like, I don't like this, the sound of but that at then, all. but then he was like, "What made him like look forward again was not only himself, but thoughts for those around him." He was like, "You know, I was thinking about a lot of things. Uh, I thought that I couldn't retire after Japanese nationals. Like I've come like so far. I I want to land the quad axle. This is everyone's dream." This is the dream that everyone has cast their bets on for me. So this is for everyone. And of course, you know, it's for him too. But I'd like this dream to come true for all of you. Oh. And I was like, I wasn't thinking about, you know, the Beijing Olympics wasn't on my radar. Apparently his childhood dream was just to win two. Just to win two Olympic Olympics. Oh, just two. Just two. Just two. But, you know, after speaking to some people and, you know, all the support he's been getting, he was like, you know what, I'll I'll go to the Olympics. I'll go all out to win a third goal and hit that quad axle. And you know what? <laughs> this kid's this kid's insane. Yeah, it's pre- pretty great. Can't wait to see it. Absolutely. That was a very lukewarm sentiment. I'm truly fucking excited to see it. <laughs> We're just tired, okay? Just We're tired. like internally su- it's like when you're texting ha 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 and you're like stone faced. Like you're actually you're feeling the, the sentiment, but yes. the face isn't expressing. Exactly. It. <laughs> However, I think that's it for this episode. I truly I thought this competition was a great watch. Oh, it was a really good one. I loved experiencing it with, you know, everyone online as well as watching the skaters. It was it was really good nationals. Oh, so nice. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, that about wraps it up. So I am Joss, and you can come and chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod. That's L U T Z Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, please shoot us an email at Let's Get Down Pod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and are one of those people who cannot believe that Yuzu doesn't telegraph into his quad axle mall, then please leave us a review and give us some five-star love. We would really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye.